Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for this session of Top 10 Tech Thursday. Again, we're going to be talking about Virtual Stand 6.1 and as far as what's new, I'll be covering the what's new part along with showing you that offline demo that Linda told you about, and then Tom will follow up showing the VSAN assessment. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to show this slide. This slide is kind of a nice summary of all the updates that are new, either new items or updated items to version 6.1 of Virtual SAN. As you see, there's quite a few of them here. Um, I'll be covering most of them in a little more detail in the slides. I do want to mention a couple that I don't really go into detail because they're kind of basic in, in as far as covering them. But if you look under the Enterprise Availability and Data Protection, we have added support for SMP fault tolerance. Oracle Rack, as well as Windows Server Failover Clustering. So we've now offered support for those particular um, products in version 6.1. Just a side note, though, the SMP fault tolerance, that is, you're not able to use that while you're also using stretch cluster type configurations, which we'll talk about in more detail shortly. So again, this is just a nice overview slide, but I'm going to be going over most of this. So first off, I just wanted to cover um, there's a couple of main areas where all these updates and new items kind of fall into. This one was kind of on its own, so I'm just going to cover this real quick. But we've added the ability to perform an on-disk format upgrade, which is extremely helpful and useful for us virtual admins. This gives the, the admins a simple way to upgrade from a virtual SAN 5.5 environment, which was using format version 1.0, to the new vSAN FS format version 2.0, which is in 6.1. So as you see here, it's just a very simple click of the upgrade button, and it will automatically upgrade that vSAN file system on your vSAN data store for you. So again, making it very easy. There's no longer a like command line that you have to do or anything like that. No, you don't have to do all the research for the command lines. So again, we're trying to make everything very simple and easy for the virtual admin. As you know, there's not a whole lot to configure in virtual SAN to begin with within the vSphere web client, so this is just another step towards making life easy for us. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and cover everything that falls under the new hardware options. Even though most of you already know that vSAN is very hardware specific, and whenever you're looking at either vSAN ready nodes or individual components, it must be on that vSAN hardware compatibility list or the HCL. So I just want to talk about this briefly. The link is in the upper right hand corner of the slide here for the vSAN hardware compatibility list for your reference. It has a list of various vSAN ready nodes that are compatible uh, from all the different vendors. We also have the quick reference guide and also provides the ability to go ahead and look up individual hardware compatibility, such as maybe a uh, IO controller, maybe SSD drives, whatever. Just again, I like to mention this because it is very critical to when you're talking about vSAN that. All the components are a part of that, are on that hardware compatibility list. So one thing that we've added in regards to the hardware compatibility list is that we now have nine different profiles for different objectives, designs, and size and considerations in regards to vSAN. There are three for server workloads, a low, a medium, and a high, and those are for the hybrid configuration. You can see that the number of VMs supported, IOPS, memory, disk size are increasing as you go up in the profiles. There's also two server workload profiles, medium and high, for the all flash configurations. Because remember, starting with version six, you can either do the hybrid, which is uh, a mix of SSDs and standard hard disk drives, or you can do the all flash of all SSD drives. For those looking to run a VDI environment, such as Horizon View on top of the vSAN, there's also two profiles for the hybrid VDI, link clones and full clones and also to all flash VDI profiles, again, link clones and full clones. So for more details on the design and sizing assumptions used for each of these profiles, go ahead and take a look at that vSAN hardware quick reference guide that was in the previous slide on the link that I provided for the hardware compatibility list. There's a link there that you can click to get and look at that guide. vSAN 6.1 now offers also expanded support for the Blade systems, which support for direct access JBOD as well. So this opens up more hardware options again. Um, it's not just your typical 2U, 4U type of server anymore. We can now 
uh, use vSAN within Blade environment as well as using, again, JBOD. So this opens up a lot more possibilities for different customers and how they use different hardware for vSAN. We've also added support for newer hardware devices, such as the UltraDIM SSDs, which connects flash storage to the memory channel via DIM slots, and it achieves a very low write latency from what everybody's seeing. UltraDIMs provide even greater density and performance. Then we also have the addition of the NVMe, which is a new communications protocol that they developed especially for SSDs. This allows for greater parallelism to be utilized by both hardware and software. As a result, again, we're seeing various performance improvements across the board. So again, these new hardware types can be used with vSAN, so again, just improving the performance that you can get out of the vSAN cluster. New hardware option also with vSAN 6.1 is vSAN Robo, much like you've seen the vSphere Robo as well. And the Robo option has two physical vSAN nodes and one nested virtual ESXi appliance that acts as that witness VM. Each Robo site or vSAN cluster will have a witness VM. Best practice is to have all the witness VMs in your main data center, then all the sites will be managed by a single vCenter. This option makes it more economical for businesses such as retail companies that may have, say, 50 different robo sites. Again, each robo site is going to have two physical vSAN ready nodes, and then that witness is going to be back in the main data center. One of the most exciting new features, though, that were added with 6.1 is the stretch cluster capability. Stretch clusters are going to provide you an active-active type of architecture for vSAN, which provides site-level protection with zero data loss and near instant, instantaneous recovery. The ability to provide production apps at both sites with seamless mobility across them is now capable with the stretch cluster. Zero downtime for planned events as well. But keep in mind that with stretch clusters, uh, they are typically limited to metro distances only, and there are some requirements as far as connections between the two primary sites, which I'll get into here in just a second. Virtual SAN stretch cluster, again, can be used to enable that active-active type of data center architecture. If any of the sites fail for whatever reason, there'll be no data loss. The architecture is configured much in the same way as you would a single-site vSAN cluster when you're going into the vSphere web client and configuring it. It's basically the same exact way that you would a normal cluster. Each of your sites are in a fault domain. Two will consist of your stretch cluster that can contribute both compute and storage resources, and then the third host is going to be your witness VM. You should configure, though, your two primary sites so they, they do not exceed 50% utilization to ensure that one site can run all your VMs in the event of a total site failure. So again, the whole concept of the stretch cluster with vSAN is that if you have a site failure, that you can run everything over on the one side. So just make sure that when you're architecting this out and using stretch clusters, that each side of that cluster is not being utilized more than 50%. Because otherwise, if you do have a failure of the site and it moves over and you're running everything off the one site, then your, your resources are going to be pegged. You're not going to be able to run everything. That witness VM is essentially just, again, a nested virtual ESX host that runs in that third site. In the future, uh, it's not available right this second, but you will be able to run your witness VM in a vCloud Air instance. So that'll be really nice once that is um, released in the near future. The witness VM, again, does not hold any customer data whatsoever. It only holds a very small amount of metadata. There's no VMs running on that witness. The witness is basically responsible for quorum and voting mechanisms during cluster-related failures, just like you would in a Microsoft cluster, same concept. In the event that the witness does fail, you can create a new witness and then just add it to that cluster again, but that is a manual process. It's not an automatic one. And as you see here, there are three different examples uh, showing the compute resource requirement for the witness VM, depending on the size of your environment, as you see, it's not overly demanding for that witness VM. It's very minimal. With vSAN stretch cluster, the site network requirements are specific in order to guarantee that that stretch cluster will perform appropriately. So between your two main sites, you must ensure that the maximum network latency is no more than five milliseconds or less round-trip time RTT. 
as well as having a bandwidth for the associated workload that's critical. And that's why, again, we say that, you know, this is essentially stretch clusters are for metro distances only. You can also support up to 100 kilometers uh, apart as long as the following network requirements are met. Less than or equal to 200 milliseconds round trip time and that you have a greater than or equal to 100 megabit connection to the witness using a layer 3 connection with no multicast. And then also less than or equal to 5 millisecond round trip time over a 10, 20, 40 gigabit connection between your data fault domains and that's using a layer 2 with multicast. So the traffic to the witness host is mostly limited to create, delete, reconfigure, change policies, failovers, and fallback type of situations. There is a heartbeat between the witness and the main site, which typically happens once a second. The master and the backup sends heartbeats to the witness every second, but after five consecutive failures, the communication is declared failed. Hey, hey, Tim, before you go on, there is a yeah. question. It came, in, it came in on the chat. So, again, please put your questions in the Q&A panel um, so our, our panelists can see them, because right now I'm the only one seeing that particular question. Anyways, can different disk groups participate to the same vSAN data store, have SSDs from differing vendors of same or differing spec, if that makes sense? I, I believe the general answer is yes, you can have some differences in the hardware, but it's highly recommended that you're using all of the same type of hardware. Um, I personally would not recommend um, kind of doing a hodgepodge of different types of hardware, um, but I believe that there's no, re, there's no like solid restriction that says that you have to have all the exact same, you know, brand model and size hard drives, whether it be SSD or standard hard drives. Um, so you can mix and match, but it's obviously not recommended. Especially Thank you. In the case of a failure. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, also mentioned search clusters are interoperable with vSphere HA and DRS. HA and DRS do not use the witness VM as a target, and you'll see in the vSphere web client it's going to show up as a incompatible target. So it's not going to try to move anything to that witness VM. But during an HA failover, if one site fails, all the vSAN objects will become inaccessible on that partition or fault domain, and then obviously it's going to move over to the other that's still up and running. So HA will fill over the running VM to the other active site, and this is why I specifically said make sure that your each site is not more than 50% utilized because of in that event of a failure, you need to be able to run everything over on the one side. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, tools as far as monitoring troubleshooting your vSAN environment. Now, the vSAN health check isn't new to vSAN 6.1, but there have been some improvements uh, since it was released in version 6. That's when the health check first came in. As you can see, uh, the health check does provide health reports on all your vSAN clusters, associated network, the data that's in your actual vSAN data store, the associated limits, any of your physical disks that are in your vSAN ready nodes that are participating in that vSAN cluster, as well as provide health statuses for your stretch cluster. And that's because of the stretch cluster addition with 6.1, they also added a bunch of health checks for specifically that stretch cluster configuration. The health check plugin, uh, the, excuse me, the health check plugin was previously a separate manual install that the admin would have to do with 6.1, they've actually uh, baked that health check into the update. So whenever you do a either an update from 6.0 to 6.1, or if you just do a fresh install of 6.1, you actually are going to have that health check plugin automatically installed for you. So there's no longer you having to go in and connect to each host and manually install it using command line tools. So again, saving time and effort. Um, and as you can see here, it's just a simple click of the button to update the hardware compatibility database because remember part of the health checks are going out and checking your drivers and such associated to your controller uh, and everything else. So with this, you can either update, as you see here, you have the button to update from a file or you can just go out and reach out to the internet and get the latest update to that HCL um, database by 
strictly just uh, clicking on the Get the Latest Version online. And then also a really uh, nice tool for the admins is that now if you open a support ticket with VMware, you can then click this button to upload the support bundle. Because typically when you call in a ticket, they'll say, okay, we'll send us the support bundle so that they can look at all the logs to see what's going on. Well, now this will automatically do that for you. It will export that bundle. And I'll show you this in the demo real quick, but basically it's just a matter of putting in the service ticket number, many notes, and click OK, and it sends it off. So again, helping out that admin, saving a lot of time and effort. Now, the, we also, again, this isn't something new to 6.1. It was in 6 as well, but I did want to show it anyway for those that might be a little bit new to vSAN. We do have some proactive uh, tests here that you can go in, and as you see, we have, we can go in and create a VM. We can go ahead and check the performance of our multicast as well as our storage. So these are some nice quick tools that you can go in and run them to make sure your environment is running properly and, and efficiently as well to make sure that it's performing to the way it's supposed to. So these are just some of the performance tests and proactive tests that you can run from within the Easter web client. So insisting in uh, troubleshooting and monitoring as far as your vSAN environment, before it was a little bit cumbersome. There was a lot of command line tools. You know, the GUI didn't really offer a whole lot of, um, other than some of those checks that I showed you, which are useful. Um, but to really do any monitoring, you had to do all command line. Well, now with 6.1, um, we have added the visualized operations or VR ops. MPSD management packs for vSAN version 6.0 and 6.1. Management pack provides deeper insight into your vSAN cluster from within vRealize operations. So if you're familiar with vRealize operations and what it does for your host and vCenter and all your VMs, we're now adding this pack to where you get that deep insight into your vSAN environment as well. It provides the ability to give you a global view of all your vSAN clusters you can manage capacity monitoring and planning for the vSAN data stores, give notifications on failures, performance, uh, compliance issues, and also gives you root cause analysis, making management and troubleshooting easier than ever before. So again, all the benefits, if you're used to realize operations, you're now getting that to look into your vSAN environment and data store. So although this is technical, I just want to cover uh, licensing real quick because of the updates and changes. We do have some new licensing. So just to cover this in about 30 seconds here, as you can see we now have three editions. We have standard, which provides all the core functionality of vSAN uh, for a hybrid architecture, and that's using both SSDs for caching and then your regular hard drives for capacity. The advanced version gives you the all flash option along with the ability to use stretch clusters. So again, that gives you the ability to use all SSD for all flash data store, and then as well as doing stretch clusters. And finally, the new Robo edition, which is based on a 25 VM pack, and that is uh, basically maximum 25 VMs per physical site, rather than the typical per CPU that you're used to with the standard and advanced version. All additions do include the VR Ops management pack that I previously mentioned, and then with using the VSA replication appliance, um, you can get down to a five-minute RPO time using the VSA replication with vSAM. Some resources. Uh, yes. I just want to give you a time check that it's 8:53, so we'll, um, you know, uh, Tom probably needs at least 15 minutes. So just FYI. Okay. Yep. Um, Thanks. Getting ready to uh, finish up here and do the demo, and it'll only take a minute or two. Yep, thanks. No problem. So, real quick here, just some resources for you. If you're not familiar with the hands on lab, there's the link to vmware.com slash go slash try dash vsan dash en. Um, it'll walk you through step by step uh, basically configuring using vsan. We also can download, obviously, a free 60 day trial. VMUG members get a six month eval and you can also pay $200 to get a one-year eval. Then we have the new vSAN assessment, but I'm not going to talk about that because that's what Tom's going to talk about. Then real quick, let me just switch over here. I just want to show you, this is an offline demo. This is not a live environment, just to warn you. Uh, but I did want to show you the interface real quick. So if we go on the cluster and we go to manage, you see here we're on under virtual SAN and health. If we go to edit settings, 
You can turn on the health check and then you can set the interval in which it does the health check automatically for you and runs those checks. Again, we can also update the hardware compatibility list database, as I said here, either from file or go online. Then we can also upload the support bundle like I was talking about, put in your service request ID there, any notes that you want to do, and then you go ahead and you can send that. Then from a mining perspective, as far as health, as you see here, these are some of the pre-configured health checks. Uh, for example, you have the network health here, various different checks under the network health. And then we also have checks for the physical disk health here. And then when I mentioned the hardware compatibility list a database update, that's for like when you're, it's going to check driver versions against your controllers and such. And as you see here, it's showing some warnings. So again, the interface hasn't really changed much from a demo perspective. It really wouldn't benefit you showing you a live environment anymore because nothing's really changed other than some additional health checks for clustering and stuff like that. So that's, uh, that's all I have for my part. So Tom, I'm going to pass the ball over to you. Perfect. Hey, thanks a lot, Tim. You're mm -hmm. welcome. So let me, I'm and... the presenter. Awesome. So let me go here. One moment. Shot a PowerPoint. And can you see my PowerPoint? I can see it. Yeah, just swap your dis displays. Yeah. Yeah, I had the uh, the little WebEx thing was covering it up, so I couldn't I couldn't change it. <laughs> well, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Hey, thanks a lot, Tim and and Linda. Um, so you know, Tim went over vSAN, and what I wanted to talk to everybody about today was just the assessment tool, right? So so VMware does have a vSAN assessment tool, and that's what we'll talk about. So what is it, right? So Generally, when we talk to customers, you know, about storage, um, a lot of times, you know, the, the conversation has a lot of really, you know, common themes, right? Performance. A lot of times, you know, when we do have an issue in VMware, a lot of times it goes, it revolves around storage performance, right? We have disk latency issues, things like that. Obviously, capacity, right? You know, everybody, you know, once you have this virtual environment, everybody thinks the VMs are free, so capacity is an issue. They're using up all of this expensive SAM storage. Um, complexity, that's probably the third issue we deal with, right? I mean, dealing with, you know, especially if it's a fiber channel shop or something, you know, it's complexity is an issue, right? It's, a, it's an entirely different skill set, and a lot of times, you know, people don't have the luxury of having a dedicated storage admin. So, you know, not only are you the vSphere guy, now you're the storage guy, and oh, since you're doing storage, now you gotta know fiber channel and maybe iSCSI. So, you know, it's, it, it can get to be quite a load on people. So, one of the nice things is vSAN, right? So vSAN can really help alleviate these issues. Um, just because we can, you know, we can deal with the performance, the capacity, and the complexity. Like, like Tim showed you, you manage it through the web client. Um, but the thing is, to make sure that we propose a valid solution, you know, a valid vSAN solution, we need to, you know, we need to understand the environment. So we can use the vSAN assessment tool to analyze that customer's environment, and that way we can make an accurate estimate of what, you know, how to size that vSAN to, to fit their needs. So the thing is the vSAN assessment tool, it's a free tool, it's a software as a service, right? It's available to, uh, you know, it's like Tim and myself, VMware SEs, um, the partner community, you guys have access to it too, access to it also, excuse me, um, you know, especially your, your engineers. So, you know, we've got that and, and it's a, just a great thing, right? Because cause with this assessment, you know, we can find out you know, what VMs are suitable candidates for vSAN, you know, whether they need to do a hybrid vSAN or all flash, you know, we can, we can come up with sizing and hardware recommendations, you know, what kind, you know, capacity and number of solid states, mechanical hard drives, or the number of hosts. And we can also do a TCO analysis, and that way what we can do is we can do that analysis, and then we can compare that to like a traditional storage array. So what is the assessment? You know, what is it really, what is that tool? So it's really two components, um, the collector and the portal. So the collector, 
That's, it's just a virtual appliance that's going to de be deployed in the customer's environment, and that's going to collect data. The data is then forwarded to the portal and keep note, you know, because this is something that's going to come up, you know, when customers ask us, you know, we're connecting to their environment. It is a secure connection. It's the HTTPS connection, so the data is secure. Um, and then it's going to connect to that portal. And really, the portal is just a web application on VMware side. And all that's going to really do, it's going to, it's going to receive the data from the customers, the customer's um, collector machine, you know, store it and analyze it. And then what we'll do later, so we've got all that data, now we can take that data and we can, we can present that back, we can show the customer, and then there's associated reports that are made available to us. So the assessment itself is pretty straightforward, and following this, I, I think it's after this slide, it, it'll, I'll, I've got some screenshots, and it'll walk you through the assessment piece. So it's really, like I said, it's, it's a pretty easy process. So what's the first thing? Sign up and create an assessment, right? Pretty straightforward. The customer is going to deploy and configure the collector at their location. We're going, to, we're going to collect data. Generally, that's about seven days. We're going to run it for about seven days. That way we can, you know, make sure we capture, you know, any, any peak periods during the week. You know, obviously longer is better, but seven days is generally sufficient. After we do all that, we just, we're going to get the assessment. We'll get together with the customer. We'll, we'll view it, and then we'll just go over our findings. It's pretty straightforward. So, yeah, let's look at the, let's look at the assessment itself, right? So, you can see here we've got the sign-up, shows you where to sign up um, to, to create an assessment. First thing you're going to do is going to create an account, right? Um, all we're going to do is just register, register that. One thing to note, too, is in this, in, so in this block, I, I noted it here because it's a little bit small in the text, but in the more information area, there's links for additional information, right? Detailed installation instructions, other links, et cetera. So after we've done that, we've signed up. So now what we do, the, so the dashboard, if you look here, we've got a dashboard because this, you know, in this case we've logged in. You can see there's some existing um, assessments that have been run, right? That'll just help you keep track of multiple assessments that you're running for different customers. All we do, just click on the, the new assessment button to create a new assessment. Um, and if you look here, so once we do that, the tool does offer us to, to run different types of assessments, we're just going to choose the vSAN assessment. So we're going to just fill in the customer information, click create, right? None of this is, you know, rocket surgery so far, pretty straightforward. Um, what will happen then is after we've created that assessment, now the customer is going to receive an email. They'll click on the, a link in there to confirm the assessment, and then they're going to be directed to this page. All they do is come in, they accept the invite, and then they can start, they can begin the assessment. First step is really, you know, now they can, they can start preparing. Um, first thing we need to do is download that collector appliance, like we said. So this is going to run in their environment. So it's, really, it's just a virtual machine. It's a virtual machine that's going to run, you know, in their environment, you know, just, and collect data. So one quick note. Their vCenter does need to be at least a version 4.1 or higher, which really shouldn't be an issue. Um, if somebody's that far back, you know, if they're beyond 4, then, you know, they, they need to get upgraded anyways. Another thing to note is that the appliance does need to run on a 64-bit host. Again, if they're running vSphere 5 or higher, it's really not an issue, but, you know, just, just a quick note that they have that information. They're going to um, configure the assessment, right? So all they got to do, they're going to browse the, v, the, the collector VM. They're going to put in that assessment key. And what that's going to do, that's going to unlock the assessment so they can begin, right? So we said, as we noted earlier, you know, on that first page of that more info section, that's where the detailed instructions are. So we're not going to really get into the nitty gritty of the install of the appliance. We've got all that documented. We're going to keep configuring the appliance, right? So now we need to decide what type of assessment to run. So we're either going to be migrating specific virtual machines to a new vSAN cluster. Usually that's going to be a more static type environment, or we're going to migrate an entire cluster to a vSAN. You know, that might be like a test dev environment or something. So we just make that choice, right? We'll, we'll select which type we want to do, and we just move from there. So. We did mention a little bit earlier about security, right? We talked about that connection 
to the portal with that HTTPS appliance. But again, you know, this is a strange VM to your customer. What about all my data? We don't collect any data in that collector appliance. All it's really doing is just collecting vSCSI traces. It's looking at the, the IOs, you know, the read and write IOs, the number of bytes IO size. So it's really just performance data. There's no data per se transmitted and especially, you know, transmitted to VMware's, you know, um, the portal. So we've let that assessment run, right? It's been running for about a week. And after the collectors run, now we just log into the portal and we review the results. And if you look here, we can also export a full report and view it as a, in a spreadsheet form. So that really runs through the assessment. Again, it's pretty straightforward. You know, we've got some resources that can help you. You know, like I said, we've got all the online documentation. VMware has resources that can help us help you as well. Um, definitely think it's worthwhile for you to do this, right? The assessment, it's really, it's a key piece of that sales program because, you know, like we mentioned earlier, you know, vSAN's new to these customers. And, you know, when we just tell them, oh, yeah, you just size it out, you know, if we can really give them that level of comfort that, hey, we've analyzed your environment. We're not just giving you a ballpark estimate. If we can analyze their environment and say, this is what the tool recommends, this is what you really need for your environment, it's going to really show them, you know, that this is going to fit their environment, right? It's going to show the customer, you know, it's going to show them, you know, how much efficiency they can gain and how much money they can save. Because remember, we got that TCO analysis also. And again, you know, like I said, the key thing is running it in, in your own environment. They're going to be confident that we've really correctly sized and configured that vSAN solution. And I do believe that's the last slide of my deck, Linda. I think I do have the thank you slide. 